Welcome back. So in this brief lecture, I would introduce the topic of 3D phase diagrams. I don't know how um, useful it is to look at 3D phase diagrams as opposed to two-dimensional phase diagrams. But just for completeness, uh, I'm going to elaborate on this. So you just need to be aware of uh, 3D phase diagrams. Okay, So I, I don't particularly consider them as useful because there are better ways of uh, viewing uh, data. All right. So, okay, so what do we, what are we talking about here? So we know for uh, a single phase, uh, for a simple compressible uh, system, for a single phase region, in a single phase region, if you specify two intensive variables, the third intensive variable, for example, is a function of the two other intensive variables, right? That's what you really know. So in, in some ways, you can say that pressure is a function of a specific volume and temperature. You can, uh, because once you specify the specific volume and temperature in the single phase region, automatically pressure is uh, specified. So you can write pressure as a function of specific volume and temperature. All right, so this is one way of saying the same thing in a visual manner. So it's a 3D representation of all the equilibrium points. See, you should also understand all these points that we have here are equilibrium points, okay? So that's the what we can describe in uh, Tawa dynamics, right? So if you look at this, is it easy to interpret anything or get a pattern? So I find it hard. Uh, so all I try to look at is 2D phase diagrams, okay? So actually all the 2D phase diagrams are but a projection of data here along a two-dimensional plane, okay? And this is much easier to interpret, okay? So uh, and get the sense uh, of what's happening. Uh, so especially if we specify these temperatures, in along these manner, okay. So uh, it's it's this two-dimensional representation is much uh, easier to interpret and uh, compared to this three-dimensional interpretation. Okay, so it has colorful pictures, the three-dimensional representation, but I don't know how useful it is. Uh, so how do you think about this? So in this two, three-dimensional picture, you uh, this is a axis that specifies the temperature, okay? So you can specify the temperature in this manner also, right? So, and it's much easier to interpret. So you can understand. So if you're at, let's say, uh, a very high uh, temperature, for example, here, the temperature keeps on increasing, you would know that you're going to be uh, not having a critical point, right? So that's why you are somewhere here. So at a particular uh, let's say critical temperature for the corresponding pressure uh, for, for this this uh, uh, for this substance. Uh, you have the critical point. So when you say you are indicating this particular line here, so what do you, uh, there'll be a, a line, something like this, right? So that's the way to interpret. So there is this liquid uh, vapor here and this one, and if you go to sufficiently low temperatures, uh, as we go in this direction, you decrease the temperature. We know that the difference between saturated liquid and saturated vapor keeps on uh, increasing and the specific volume of the condensed phase, condensed phase is the liquid and the solid, they are the condensed phases. The specific volume of the condensed phases keeps on decreasing. At some point, uh, it becomes a solid. The condensed phase is no longer a liquid. So, it becomes a solid, so below the triple line, so below the triple line, which is indicated here. So uh, in this kind of representation, you have lesser and lesser temperature. Uh, you will have the triple line. We have seen that in a previous lecture. So you go and look at look it up, uh, the two dimensional representation of that system incorporating the, the solid phase two and 
so that you can correlate that to uh, this particular three dimensional representation okay so all right so if you there's another representation here right uh, you can have temperature and specific volume two dimensional representation again pressure right so this uh, is if you want to correlate this two dimensional representation to three dimensional phase diagram you should have different set of lines right what do i mean by that so here different temperatures are indicated by these lines right so uh, indicated by these lines and these lines can be correlated with these lines right so almost i searched for a cup uh, in few books where this three dimensional representation is present they always only show this they don't uh, show lines of constant pressure right so if you had lines uh, three dimensional representation with specific isobars right so these are isotherms these lines are isotherms uh, if you had isobars specified in a three dimensional diagram you can also correlate that three dimensional diagram with this two dimensional representation all right so then it's much more easier but if you are really serious about using these phase diagrams uh, i would suggest you just better look at a two dimensional diagram instead of looking at a three dimensional diagram okay so phase diagram so you have to be informed that uh, this is three dimensional diagram and it's better avoided okay that's uh, uh, central purpose here just look at two dimensional diagram uh, so i would just say that there is these other kinds of uh, liquids like uh, let's say uh, water okay which contracts in uh, freezing you have a slightly different three dimensional diagram so you try to contrast this to this okay so good luck with that i prefer looking at a two dimensional diagram which we have done what really happens what is the exact difference between a liquid that expands at freezing and liquid that expands contracts at freezing okay so i would just interpret from a two dimensional diagram uh, but there are uh, three dimensional diagram which in where this region uh, is uh, different right so with that i would end this uh, brief lecture uh, thank you